Hello, this is Alex from cables.gl. I want to show you the texture projection operator. It is one of my favorites, super easy to use, but actually quite powerful. And uh, we're gonna look at some examples, maybe look at some kind of real world use cases, and uh, of course, the funky effects we can do with them. And we're gonna probably use this scene because it's quite simple for learning the operator. But let's look at the examples. And this one, you remember from the Shadows tutorial. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's pretty cool. But we didn't get into the into this caustics effect that I'm doing with the texture projection. And what I'm doing is all of the shapes in the scene, the cube, the cone, they're all getting the same texture, which is kind of this wavy, chromatic, aberrated cell texture. And we're getting these interesting um, effects in the background that kind of look like sunlight going through the waves above in the pool. But uh, really, it's just the texture projection. And you really just have to think of the texture projection just like a real projector, right? Like you plug in a video source into a projector, like a beamer, uh, and then point it at something. And it will just wrap around the 3D object that you're projecting onto or like a flat wall or something like that. And... Uh, that's basically the, the whole gist of it, right? You don't have to worry about UVs of your model, which I think is the, the real beauty of it. So uh, in this example, I wanted to have an image in this TV, which is another scene that I'm feeding into the render to texture, and then uh, it goes into this image compose. But I didn't really want to mess around with the compositing the texture the correct way to then put onto the material and all that stuff. I just wanted to project it from some angle onto the screen and then end up with a pretty decent result, right? It's not bad. Uh, and actually, then I thought maybe I'll add some glow and I use texture projection for that too, for this um, blur uh, that is kind of simulating the screen glowing. Uh, then we're going to look at um, a little bit more advanced stuff that the operator allows us to do, which is kind of multi material, multi-object um, projection with the same texture, and then this unconnected point material stuff that we can also use this operator for. But let's go back to this one, and in this simple scene, I'll probably just publish it, and you can follow along. We have a static texture, and I'm animating this thing falling over the objects with just the uh, texture projection operator and a timer because we have some position X and position Y offsets that we can do on our texture. All right, so let's go through all these things. When you put it down, you first have to make sure it's uh, part of your material, right? So it's we have a Fong material here. So if we disconnect our texture projection, we just have this Fong material with some shadow applied as well. But uh, if I connect it here, see, it's not going to work, right? So um, it usually is best practice to split up your scene into different materials and then use a texture projection uh, per material. You can stack texture projections, which is pretty nice. So, uh, for example, let's try it. Let's see if we can break this thing. I kind of doubt it. So if we plug this into here as well and then change the size. See, now we have two texture projections with uh, one static texture with the with these uh, polka dots and then this animated one over here. But uh, we don't really need that right now. But definitely play around with that. Um, then we have the blend mode. So right now it's multiply. If we do normal, it kind of changes and then add. It's similar to Photoshop, of course. Um, you can layer uh, different texture projections or your materials um, with these blend modes and in texture projection operator, we also have this control. Then we have this target and we're going to cover this a little bit later, but for now, when you're dealing with something like an image projected over a 3D model, just use color. If you want to use point clouds and point size, uh, we'll cover that. So either skip to that chapter right now or uh, wait a little bit. Then we have the amount, of course, which is how much 
are we applying to the scene of this um, with this texture projection? Then we have use texture alpha, and if our texture has an alpha in it, then we can also make that part of the projection, which is pretty cool. And you can um, is similar to maybe if you're familiar with color area, we have these things called like discard or opacity. It's kind of in the same uh, ballpark where you're using the alpha of your texture to also hide parts of your mesh with projection. So that's pretty cool. Then we have, of course, this offset of the texture. And then the most interesting thing is this rotation section of the parameters. And that is, how are we projecting this texture onto our scene? So again, just think of it as a real-world projector, beamer, and how are we shooting that texture over our meshes? Um, this gets really cool because you get these interesting distortions uh, that I think are super fun to play around with. Highly recommended. And that's really how we're getting those effects with the um, kind of fake caustics falling on the sides of the cube. Uh, and then on the bottom here, it's less distorted. So you can get really interesting uh, texture projection effects this way. And then we have the mapping. And this is the direction that we're going to work with, right? So you can kind of ignore the rotation for now and just think of like from where are we projecting it. So if I make these uh, rotations all zero, 0, to make it a little bit easier for us to understand, we are projecting from the top and the Z axis. And the way our scene is set up, this will affect how the texture is distorted along our meshes. So if we switch to maybe XZ, then we get this uh, um, more uh, projected from the top and then, and then sliding uh, along the sides of the cube and, and all that stuff differently than we would with the YZ projection. And then we also have XY, uh, and yeah, you get completely different effects how this texture spread over your shapes. So, for example, if we change this rectangle uh, angle, the floor, we will see how the texture projection is distorted now. Yeah, so you can kind of imagine that the the plane is grabbing parts of this texture because it's almost like aligned to the projection. So now we're getting this really, really stretchy um, uh, texture over our model. And then when we start to angle the rectangle towards the projection, then we're getting a less distorted shape. Um, yeah, so it's pretty wild. And then you start to get into the projection angles and it gets super funky. But um, you just have to play around with it and find what matches the effect you're going for the best. So um, what else can we do? Then we have this discard and world space settings, which are quite interesting. And usually I just leave it on repeat on, on my image compose and on the texture projection, I don't use discard. But uh, sometimes it's very handy where you don't want to repeat the texture all over your um, scene and you just want to have it in the center. So, for example, if I fix what I did here, we will understand this a little bit better. And like so. So now you can see that we're no longer repeating this section all over, all over the scene. We just have this... Um, single bit of it that um, the rest of it is discarded and uh, it's square and it can be moved around. So <laughs> before I start rambling even longer, what it allows us to do is to maybe stack more than one projection but uh, not cover the entire scene now, right? So when we uncheck this card, we're covering the whole scene and then when we do want to discard the edges of this texture projection. Then we're just working with the square projection that we can then position in the correct space. And, you know, if you're not just doing this for funky, cool uh, glitch effects <laughs> like I am here, you can actually use it very precisely to maybe fix a shadow or uh, add a little text on like a billboard or something like that. It's really, really handy. 
in some cases not to uh, constantly repeat your texture all over the place. But um, what I want to show you is if we don't discard, but we do clamp our uh, texture in the image compose, we will then um, stop kind of repeating the, the texture effect, which is our uh, dots here in the texture, but um, the sides will still be filled with the sides of the texture, if that makes sense, right? So if I maybe adjust um, this a little bit, you'll see how it starts to uh, warp on the sides, see? So we're not repeating the texture anymore, we're now just um, uh, clamping it in our image compose. So maybe you would need to use this, but watch out for um, repeat and discard with your texture projections. All right, rambly part of the tutorial over. Let's move on to um, maybe taking a look at this again because I'm pretty proud of it. So what we did here was have a texture projection on a specific part of the model. So I, I have this TV, I'll link it in the description. And it was all one mesh. And I just wanted to make it easy for myself because I didn't want to deal with the UVs. And I wanted to project it just on the screen model. So what I did was break out the, the screen of this TV, right? So right now I hit it so we don't see it anymore. And then I gave it a, uh, its own material and then gave it a texture projection. So we can uh, ignore... UVs and just um, use texture projection to correctly position our texture on our model. So if I offset it, you see how um, I'm controlling the, the position of the texture. Really, really nice. Um, and that reminds me, there's one more mapping mode, which is something you might be familiar with from other uh, modeling applications, which is triplanar and especially if you're well it doesn't look great here but if you're familiar with it in other 3d applications it's usually like the super easy quick way to make a repeating texture over a model that you don't have uvs for for example or you just want to like project uh, some sort of wall texture on a on the walls of a house or something and it's maybe uh doesn't need to be super precise maybe some dirt or mud or, or something like that it's a very handy projection um, mapping method that I recommend using for cool repeating textures. And then we have screen, which will use the screen um, angle, I guess, the, the camera angle to project your texture onto your scene. And this has some um, specific uses. Maybe you want to project some text that is straight, pointing straight at the camera. Um, and you don't want it uh, warped all over your 3D model, it could come in, come in handy that you're going to need the screen um, mapping method with a texture projection. Or you can even get into really interesting effects with like feedback, feedback from your camera back into the texture projection or maybe faking some sort of um, uh, shadows or uh, I don't know, like gritty effects you might see in video games or something that just happen in the screen mapping uh, space. So we have this screen mapping method where we can just uh, have it flat over your screen, but also on your scene. So um, these mapping methods, definitely play around with them and uh, show us what you make with it. All right, so let's look at the last bit um, that we didn't cover, which is the point material and also um, splitting you're seen into different materials like I kind of did with that with that TV. But uh, in this example, I didn't like how the cylinder um, looked when it was just using the same projection method, right? So what you can do is just give it another material, give it another texture projection, and then use the same texture to then uh, adjust your scene to get maybe like a more... Um, specific effect you're going for. So I can change my um, settings just for the cylinder and uh, kind of maybe make the scene a little bit more interesting than I would if the mapping method or the, the, the way the models 
are created, they don't exactly allow us to to stack them correctly together with the same texture projection, the same material. Just remember, it doesn't matter. Break it out into a new material and add another texture projection. Alrighty, so let's get into the funky bit, which is the point material settings that you can also do with the texture projection. So if you're familiar with point material, you know that we have some inputs here for the point size and uh, color and things like that, right? In this point material operator. But sometimes it can get a little bit complicated to understand how your um, point cloud is mapped texture-wise, and you kind of need to to know that when you're when you're using these inputs on the point material. But since I'm lazy and I don't want to do that, I just want to use my point cloud as kind of a uh, source for the texture projection, and then change also the point size and the color of my point cloud. So it's pretty handy. And uh, let's look at this in detail. So I have these waveform gradients going, right? And then one of these texture projections is my point size. There it is. And then the second one is my color. So again, we're stacking texture projections. Super easy. Don't be scared to do that. It's great. Um, let's maybe make the point material size a lot smaller so we can see this effect a little bit better. All right, so what's going on here? So I put down the texture projection and instead of color, I set it to point size. And usually you will see that you have this amount slider from zero to one, but that doesn't mean you can go into extremes. And remember this with pretty much any operator. If you think like, yeah, okay, this range is not exactly what I want, or I want to go into negatives, you can always just click on this um, parameter or br even break it out from the operator itself and then add a number operator and then adjust it into more extreme values, right? So you can really get funky effects. Try this out with, with your favorite operators. But in this particular case, since we're changing the strength of the texture onto the point size of the point material, we kind of have to do that anyway. So either just type in a really big number in here, like 10, uh, if you don't see anything happening, uh, or plug in another operator to affect this range and then your texture will, uh, the Luma, I guess, uh, values, the white and black values will affect the small and the big uh, point size effect of your point cloud. And then, of course, we have the color on top. So we got this easy, easy point cloud effect uh, without having to bother with uh, texture coordinates and making sure um, we're projecting it in the right way when we're connecting it to the inputs of the point material. All righty. So I um, hope you enjoyed that. I really want you to try this out. I think it's super easy, especially if you want you don't want to bother with UVs like me and uh, just project some cool images onto some 3D models you have or you know do some really funky, cool effects with distortion that you can get with angling and... Uh, changing the size of the texture projection. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely comment below if you like this. Po post some awesome uh, projects you've done with this operator. And I don't know, let's make this operator even better in the future, right? We just got to use it. Thank you. Bye.